Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be investigating the various modes available to the Ryzen processors, specifically relating around gaming. After all, you've seen compatibility mode, and perhaps even murmurs that disabling SMT does indeed improve performance. Does it? Well, we'll be answering that in this very video. And by doing so, we shall also investigate two distinct generations of Ryzen processors. That's right, we're not only going to investigate the original 14nm processors, but also the 12nm as well, the 1700X and the 2700X, by comparing them with exactly identical clock speeds on an identical rig. If you've ever hovered over legacy mode in the Ryzen Master Control Panel, AMD does actually hint that this may be the case. To be clear, enabling this mode isn't without a downside. Enabling this on either our 1700 or 2700X cuts the number of physical cores in half, from 8 down to just 4, although SMT is still enabled, meaning we have still 8 threads available to us. It does this by disabling the secondary CCX, leaving just 4 cores and therefore 8 threads, assuming that you do leave SMT enabled. In theory, this helps applications which are poorly coded for multi-threading to run better by ensuring they have fewer hardware threads and resources, such as cache, to manage. With the secondary CCX disabled, it is important to remember that the number of PCIe lanes and dual-channel memory controller aren't affected, We've also decided to include SMT, simultaneous multi-threading tests, for the sake of completeness. SMT, of course, allows two threads to be run on the same CPU core, but in doing so, these threads share resources. And with the full-fledged 1700 or 2700, surely there's enough power in eight physical cores to power through most titles without SMT being a factor. So, is there any benefit for enabling legacy mode or disabling SMT? We're pitting both the 2700X and 1700X in our tests at 4 GHz locked. This is to ensure that boost frequencies aren't an issue, and thus uh, results will be consistent across the board. Memory clocks are locked at 2800 MHz, and we're using an X470 motherboard, which is provided by MSI. As a side note, I'd like to thank MSI for providing both the X470 Gaming Plus motherboard, along with the Ryzen 7 2700X processor. However, this is not a sponsored video, and, well, it was just a review sample, which unfortunately has gone back to MSI. But we'd also like to give a quick shout out to Crucial for providing us the memory as well. We're also running these tests with a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 and Windows 10, which is patched to the latest version. Let's kick things off with Ashes of the Singularity Escalation. Much like its predecessor, Escalation was designed around the usage of low-level APIs. Both DirectX 12 and Vulkan are supported, along with the legacy DirectX 11. We're going to be using DirectX 12 for our comparisons. For Ashes, we decided to stick squarely to the CPU testing. And as you might suspect from the highly multi-threaded nature of the API, higher number of threads and cores, and of course clock speed, making compelling difference to performance. Both legacy results are within spitting distance of each other, but what's clear here is that for Ashes of the Singularity at least, virtual threads help take the slack from the absence of physical cores, but can't do all the work for themselves. Comparing 4 cores and 8 threads via SMT against 8 physical cores with SMT disabled, and the results are self-evident. However, the clear winner in this test without question is leaving all of the processor, cores and threads intact, although between the two Zen generations, despite the clock speeds being locked at 4 GHz, we can see some of the IPC gains of Zen Plus coming into play. Hitman does change things up a little and we're definitely seeing legacy falling behind once again by over 15 to 20 frames per second. But curiously, SMT disabled is a tiny boost in performance for Hitman, within the realms of just a few frames a second. Does the results change by adjusting the resolution from 1080p to 720p, dropping the number of pixels rendered per frame by a factor of 2.25? In theory, reducing the GPU bottleneck, we indeed see that SMT disabled results increase by 11 FPS more, shooting up to almost 126, while SMT results stayed essentially identical. Legacy with SMT, 8 total threads, cannot hold up against 8 physical cores, so we do continue to get better results by dropping the processor out of legacy mode. And as you might expect, things only get worse if you turn SMT 
off with legacy mode enabled, leaving just a total of four threads. We lose 14 frames a second in the average benchmark, and that is actually using the Ryzen 7 2700X versus the 1700X for other benchmarks. Another DirectX 12 title, Rise of the Tomb Raider, with graphics settings set to high continues this trend. Legacy for both the 2700X and 1700X is a little behind, with SMT enabled and disabled within spitting distance of one another. Things do become more interesting when dropping down the resolution, increasing the separation between legacy and the 8-core processors. So you might say to yourself, well, is it because we're testing DirectX 12 games? After all, the whole purpose of low-level app is, is multi-threading. What about legacy titles using DirectX 11? Since we were just discussing Rise of the Tomb Raider, what about Lara's 2013 outing? Well, once again, the results here are fairly close. But for all intents and purposes, with modern hardware, this game simply is not demanding, and we're obtaining over 250 frames per second with all of our with all of our results at 1080p. Dropping the resolution down further still just continues to prove the point. If you're running such an old game, you might as well pile on the re resolution or other post-processing. Concerning yourself with SMT on or off, or whether you've got legacy mode enabled or disabled, it's just not worth your time. And it's clear from Shadow of Mordor that if you're playing an older title, you're not going to have a CPU issue. Four cores with eight threads or eight physical cores or eight physical cores and 16 threads. Both Zen and Zen Plus architecture decimate these old, older titles. And the same could be said for Metro Last Light. We decided the original release of Last Light instead of the updated code found within Redux, which don't forget had numerous improvements and tweaks to the engine, would be a better fit for our testing. The thought process here was to see how Ryzen would handle the older code, particularly during juggling large numbers of threads with, let's say, the 2700X. The 1080p results does make a noticeable impact in frame rate, and SMT on and off have no appreciable impact. But this difference is exacerbated at a lower resolution. At just 720p, with SMT disabled, it does have a slight edge. Speaking in broad terms, switching between the various modes of Ryzen does indeed have an impact in performance, and thus is true across older Silicon Summit Ridge and our Ryzen 7 1700 and the newer silicon found in Pinnacle Ridge, with the 2700X showing very similar performance numbers, albeit slightly higher, given the other chipside improvements. For a moment, let's separate results into two distinct groups. 720p and 1080p. Remember, we're conducting these experiments with a GTX 1080, and the 720p results certainly demonstrate a performance difference, and SMT enabled and disabled regularly switch places. Far Cry Primal, for example, has a slight nod towards disabling SMT. Much the same could also be said for Shadow of Mordor and Tomb Raider 2013, while other games such as Batman, Deus Ex, Metro Last Light tend to leave you drawing the conclusion that you might as well leave SMT enabled. But cranking up the resolution to 1080p, which you would assume wouldn't be too much of a challenge for a GTX 1080, and indeed, this card is still cranking out insane frame rates in those titles, and the difference just shrinks to virtually nothing. Shadow of Mordor, Metro Last Light, DLC, all of the results are just within a few percent of one another. There are a few outliers here though, and it would appear that enabling legacy mode is indeed a frame rate killer in almost all games. Far Cry Primal handles this about the best, but other titles such as Hitman are clearly CPU bound, with the GPU usage being noticeably less. Investigating this further, and this is perhaps the crux of the matter, GPU usage is king. Let's switch to Rise of the Tomb Raider using DirectX 12 to investigate GPU usage further in relation to frame rate. Lara's adventure is interesting because it pushes CPUs with smaller numbers of threads to their limits. We'll start out with 720p with various processor configurations. All of these tests were conducted with the Ryzen 7 1700X and, again, 4GHz. There are two distinctive gameplay sections we'll zero in on, and then the game's built-in benchmark. In the first several minutes of the game's opening in Syria, we see the CPU isn't taxed particularly heavily, with 8 physical cores or 8 cores and 8 threads or 8 cores and 16 threads with SMT, the GPU is generally pegged at a high 90% usage, but SMT isn't as efficient as physical cores and dropping to legacy mode with SMT 
That's a reasonable job, but do remember that these opening sequences aren't as demanding as later sections in the game. We'll get to those. But even so, when switching to just four physical cores, Legacy Mode on and SMT disabled, the CPU cores are just clearly strained, and GPU usage tanks. Things become worse still inside Geothermal Valley. With large expanses of ground, dense foliage and animal life, lots of water and other physics for the game's engine to fall back for the CPU to push. At 720p, CPU usage with 4 cores and 8 threads stays in the high 90% on each of the threads, and naturally, GPU usage drops as well. I think that the GPU and CPU usage with only 4 physical cores speaks frankly for itself, although aside from the odd bit of hitching, the game does do fairly well with such limited numbers of threads. 8 physical cores helps here, but real cores capable of providing better instructions yet again shows a clear advantage over just 4 cores with SMT. But the real winner, without question, is the full-fledged 1700 or 2700X experience. 16 threads and 8 cores with SMT of course enabled is the real MVP. At 1080p, the GPU usage does spike, even at the lower numbers of threads, but this is just a case where the card is simply being asked to draw more pixels on screen because of the higher resolution. The higher frame rate isn't the story, instead the wild variance in FPS is. As the CPU is being so heavily constrained by the nature of disabling cores, frame times are becoming a factor, with FPS fluctuating wildly as the processor struggles with physics and streaming in assets. For a bit of a bonus with Rise of the Tomb Raider testing, we decided to mess around with the in-game quality settings. So far, we've been running our tests with high. But then we went to a few sections in both Syria and Geothermal and switched the settings from high to very high. Fortunately, the game promptly loads in new assets and HBAO+, higher resolution textures, sun soft shadows, levels of detail, foliage and more become altered. In larger open Geothermal Valley level, we can see immediate differences in our results. The frame rate takes a subtle hit. The biggest change here is the GPU usage. And, lest you suspect Rise of the Tomb Raider is the outlier, these results are very similar across a myriad of testing, including Batman Arkham Knight, Metro, Last Light, Hitman, and Far Cry Primal. Doubtlessly, DirectX 12 titles tend to show larger dips in frame rate, and the older games are better at holding on to their minimums. But still, in almost all circumstances, frame rate are just simply better by leaving the additional rising cores to do their thing. So let's wrap things up here. What conclusions can we draw? Well, if you are playing a game which does have issues with larger numbers of CPU threads, we would much rather you disable uh, SMT rather than physical cores. But regarding the performance, if a game is old enough where the GPU isn't a limiting factor, or you're playing at a lower resolution, and thus the CPU is a limiting factor in some instances, some titles which aren't optimised for larger numbers of threads or disabling either SMT or enable legacy mode can be slightly better off. But as we push up levels of detail and resolution, frame rates are just generally more capped by the GPU. Also, these tests aren't including two very important factors. The first is we're neither downsampling or injecting any post-processing, something you'd likely do with an older title if you have spare GPU performance. And the secondary factor well, this is a benchmarking system. We've got no other applications running in the background vying for precious clock cycles. There's no antivirus, no half a dozen different chat applications, or Google Chrome licking its lips as it mocks game code and refuses to give up RAM or threads. In reality, performance numbers would likely vary even more without the surfeit number of threads available in either the Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 5. Don't forget, one of the areas that Intel do have an advantage over AMD is clock speed. The i5-8600K and the i7-8700K both have considerable clock speed advantages against even the 2700X. For example, you can see the 8700K hit 4.7 to 5.2 GHz quite typically on an overclock, whereas the 2700X is going to be the low 4 GHz range. The impact of this is certainly something we're going to be investigating over the next couple of weeks because we're going to be receiving an i7-8700K for review, so definitely stick around and click that subscribe button if you want more information and for us to investigate that. If you're running a Ryzen processor, whether that's Summit or Pinnacle Ridge, 
unless you're going to try and get every last FPS you can in a competitive online shooter. We'd likely advise you just don't concern yourself much with compatibility mode, unless you need to fix some genuine issue. If you find yourself having a bit of extra GPU wiggle room, you'd be better off just cranking up levels of detail or downsampling. In older titles, results are just so meaningless because you either get to a situation where you're getting several hundred frames a second and thus SMT enabled or disabled just doesn't make a difference, or yes, the application does handle multi-threads not particularly efficiently, but then GPU's more of a limiting factor. With all of that said, hopefully you have found this video somewhat informative. If you have, you can imagine what to do. Click the subscribe button, the thumbs up button, and of course the bell icon, and do leave a comment to let us know what you thought. Don't forget, if you subscribe, there is cake, and you can also check us out on Patreon as well, if perhaps you would consider just giving us a little bit of support, but of course that is totally up to you, and we certainly appreciate you just watching the video. With all of that said, have an excellent day, take care of yourselves. And bye for now.